Pokemon is one of the most beloved and successful franchises of all time. I think I googled it the other day, Pokemon officially crossed 200 bajillion dollars worldwide, it's crazy. So naturally, people are going to want a piece of that pie. And the best way to do that, apparently, is to create your own bootleg Pokemon products that you can attempt to trick unsuspecting customers with and reap 100% of the rewards. Those people deserve to be hit with a bat. So yeah, I wanted to spend today just going through the massive and very strange world of Pokemon bootlegs. Video games, toys, TV shows, you name it. Anything that's slightly Pokemon related for a cheap and lazy cash in, we're gonna talk about it. First, let's start off with some video games since, well, there's a lot of them that have been found in the wild. Whether it be at a Chinese video game stand or Russian flea markets, video games are one of the quickest and easiest scams to pull. Kids and old people especially are prone to fall victim to them. Because hey, it's got a Pokemon on the cartridge, what more proof do I need? Here's a blank check, write whatever number you want on it. The first game we're gonna check out is Pokemon Yellow on the NES. Already, you know shenanigans are afoot. So we load up the game and are immediately greeted with a 9-in-1 cartridge. Oh my god, of course we are! Luckily, however, it only seems that, like, maybe two games are Pokemon related. Pokemon Yellow and Pocket World. Pokemon Yellow! Or Pocket Monster, as it's known in... Russia? I don't know. And you know what? As long as sideways wearing hat Pikachu is having a good time, that's all that really matters. Level Velvet. Oh, hello. So the game seems to be a little side-scroller with cute little Pikachu. Alright, well hey, what's better than one cute Pikachu? Two! So immediately we're off to a bad start, because you could jump on enemies, which is a good thing, but when I tried to jump on this rock, it hurt me. I took damage from jumping on a rock. And it's seemingly just a regular old rock, it doesn't move or do anything. So why you can't jump on it is above my pay grade. Pikachu's idle animation is pretty funny though, he just stares at you, probably thinking, Listen bro, are you gonna play or not? I ain't got all day to be here. The rest of the game is just... really below average. It's a mediocre platformer with weak controls. I'm also not the most well-versed with Pokemon, but you? You're definitely not a Pokemon. Nor is any other enemy in this game. The entire game is just so jacked up. Pikachu runs like Sonic the Hedgehog. I guess the developers forgot what game they were making. And also this happened. So that's probably where I draw the line with Pokemon Yellow. I couldn't get past the first level, honestly. The problem with these bootlegs is that they have the longest levels to ever exist with no checkpoints. So you could be playing through a stage for literally 10 minutes straight, and then when you inevitably die because the game is bad, you just gotta start from the beginning again. Which no, I'm not dealing with. So the next game on the list is X-Men 2, which obviously isn't what we're talking about today. But I checked it out just to see if there was anything Pokemon related. And no, there wasn't. It was just a bad game. So let's move on to Pocket World. Or Pocket Mayro, as it's legally known. It's a Mario 1 clone where you take control of this thing. It literally looks like nothing, just an amorphous blob of pixels. That is until you get this jar of I don't even want to know, and it turns into Pikachu! So I guess this is supposed to be Pichu? And you guys were so close, you only messed up literally everything. I mean, you know, it's Mario Bros. 1, there's no reason for this particular game to even exist. There's once again no Pokemon apart from Pikachu. There's no Pokemon atmosphere, no Pokemon music, and what do we get in terms of audio? Some of the most annoying sounds I've ever heard in my life. So at least there's that. It says a lot about your Pokemon 9-in-1 cartridge when the best game in there is a Japanese exclusive Hello Kitty game where you can play volleyball. Moving on. 4-in-1, Jesus Christ, another multi-cart. Advertising Pokemon Silver, Red, Blue, and Sideways Hat Pikachu once again. Four games as advertised. Pika Click, Pika Slot, Pika Dance, and Pac-Man. I wonder what that one's gonna be, stay tuned. First game is Pika Click. On the surface, it looks like your average Match 3 Candy Crush ripoff, but it somehow manages to be a lot worse. 
You see something like this, and would rightfully assume you need to swap two pieces from their positions in order to match up multiples of the same piece. You know, like any puzzle game ever. But no, here you're literally just finding a pair of two or more shapes, and then you click on them. Like, yep, that's a pair alright. And that's another one. It's more like a game of I Spy than it is anything puzzle related. This is not a game. And look at that, I got the new record. Probably the new world record. I mean, I'm only one of like two people I know who've played this game. All right, I've kept you waiting long enough. It's time to check out what this mystery Pac-Man game is all about. Whoa, who could have guessed? It was Pac-Man, only the most successful game of 1980. You may not have heard of it. Also, why does this game not have a Pika pun? And more importantly, who cares? Pika slot. Hey, don't be throwing derogatory terms like that around. It sure is a slot machine. No prizes, no rewards, no points, no point. It's literally just for all the five-year-olds with gambling addictions. Go nuts. And last but not least, we have Pika Dance. You have to time your inputs on the D-pad with the Pokemon that line up underneath with each corresponding direction. Or, if I need to explain it in a more simple terms, it's Guitar Hero. Or DDR, as the game's high score screen will proudly tell you. Now this one had potential to be the best game in the collection. Which, yeah, it's a low bar, but they still managed to fumble the ball. Because, and I'm serious, the controls are bad. I know, how can the controls be bad in something like this? Well, it's simple, by having half of the buttons not work. Anytime the game needed me to press up or right on the D-pad, I would miss the timing every single time. I thought I just sucked and needed to learn how to figure out the timing, but I know that's not the case, because when it came to hitting left and down, I would hit them every single time. So the game literally just doesn't work, and when you miss enough beats, the game just ends. With Pikachu saying his famous catchphrase, Lose. Moving on to the Sega Genesis, we have Pocket Monster 2. I couldn't agree more. What we have here is a sequel to Pocket Monster on the NES, the garbage side-scroller that barely worked. Even without seeing the title screen though, I knew this was gonna be a sequel. How did I know? 16-bit front-facing Pikachu, I'm glad they kept that detail. So yeah, this game sucks and I don't think you expected anything less. You run around and kill other Pokémon, either by jumping on them or hawking a Pokéball so hard at their skulls you send them to the afterlife. This is literally the opposite of what a Pokéball is supposed to be. I choose you! The Pokémon themselves range from, that's kind of a Pokémon, to, that's not a Pokémon at all. That's literally just a blue monkey. I'm not too sure how to exactly describe this art style, but it's very... deviant art, if that makes any sense. None other is this more prevalent than with Charmander. You look at him go. I hate everything about this. Just like the last game, it's very much not good at all and I didn't want to pursue it. Moving on. Damn, now that's a title screen. Look at that color. Seriously, that's gotta be the most hectic title screen I've ever seen. So this is Pokemon Crazy Drummer. It's another terrible rhythm game where you can select between a whopping three songs and... Three, two, one, listen. Is it too late to turn this off? All right, awful whatever creature this is aside, look at this HUD. What corresponds to what? The only two buttons that make sense is down and left, labeled D and L respectively. You also get no time to figure it out because the game immediately bombards you with just loads of inputs you're not ready for, only to lose in a matter of seconds. Did she just say you suck? So yeah, shocker, another terrible rhythm game with the most obnoxious soundtrack you've ever heard. That's right game, you suck. Pokemon 2, finally, the sequel we've been waiting for. Even if this title screen does embody the graphic design is my passion joke. 
So in this game, Pikachu is constantly moving. You can't stop him. The only thing you can control is his direction when you reach a fork in the road. You'll be chased by all kinds of random people. There's a Pharaoh, the Grim Reaper, some kind of soldier. All while you're exploring this level full of pianos and giant cans of soda. Like, literally, what is this game? Heck, now that I think about it, Pikachu being here isn't even that weird anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. It's a small map that seems like you're supposed to be collecting things without being touched by an enemy, since one hit will kill you. But there's nothing here to collect. So I'm just hopping around like an idiot and mashing the D-pad 30 times so the game will respond, because once again, this is a Pokemon game that is controlled with the D-pad, and the D-pad doesn't respond unless you're mashing it over and over again. Oh, hell no, what am I looking at? Puckman Pokemon. I think this image pretty much sums it up. Okay, so what we have here is a ripoff of Pac-Man from the famous Pokemon 4-in-1 NES game. I'm honestly surprised it looks and plays as nice as it does. Like, it's not a bad game at all. Which, yeah, I know it's hard to mess up Pac-Man, but still. This was apparently a real arcade game in China that had an arcade cabinet and everything. I will not sleep until I own that arcade cabinet. Yeah, surprisingly a fairly normal Pac-Man game. Oh wait, that is of course until you beat a level and get rewarded with a random picture of an Asian woman. I, 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 I didn't ask for this, please don't blame me. Oh my, are we playing a normal game? The title screen looks a little different from what I remember, but hey, it's been a while. Everything's looking pretty good so far, apart from the fact we only have five letter slots for our names, which is weird. But because of that, I am now Waffle, and my rival is Chris. Okay, so once again, so far so good. Let's say goodbye to mom before we head out. Ah uh, yeah, it's said by TV that boys should go out. More! Dr. Oak said that he won... Uh, yes? Hello. Okay, maybe I pressed the button too fast and skipped it. So I start the dialogue again and... Uh, nope, that's just where the conversation cuts off. Good talk, Mom. So next we naturally show up to pick our starter Pokemon, where Chris says, Grandpa went out. Except no, he's literally right in front of you. At Waffle, what is he tweeting? There are three Pokemon. Ha 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 ha, I put Pokemon into Pokemon Ball. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. After Professor Oak's speech, Chris just sums this all up perfectly. Really bad. So, apparently, what we have here is a fan translation of the Japanese version of Pokemon Leaf Green, which I might appreciate if there wasn't already an official English release of Pokemon Leaf Green. I tried to look around and see if there were any distinct differences between the two versions, and the only thing I could find was that the Japanese version of the game loads text boxes a little bit faster. Which may not sound like a lot, but in a game like Pokemon where you're constantly just mashing the A button to skip the dialogue, I guess I could see the advantage. So the game is a fan translation. From a fan who apparently took two weeks of Japanese in high school and is just winging the rest of it. As you can tell, the dialogue has very broken English, full of incomplete sentences and words, tons of slang, and sentences that straight up don't make any sense. It's honestly not that much of a distraction if you know where to go and what to do. Obviously, if this is your first Pokemon game, then... First off, why? And secondly, I don't know, some of the text is kind of funny and worth playing through just to see what this translation has in store. Beloved quotes like, ah... What? How about Squirtle? Bort selected Vaporeon. A girl saying, you can't read. And damn it. Ah, Pokemon Leaf Green. Exactly how I remember it. Now, this isn't the only Pokemon game with a weird translation. One of the most infamous being Pokemon Vietnamese Crystal. This game is loaded with nonsense, so try not to lose your brain cells as we go through a bit of the game. Go to the elf's world. Welcome. Everyone call me elf monster. I call you oak. Ah. Gold town. Home. At least it was till I effed everything up. Who do we have? Cyndaquil. Wusichi says, 
Do you change fired elf into a big wind of fire? Oh my god, what do you want? I give you this for I trust you, you don't even know me! I believed you will use it. <laughs> Bro, I'm literally 10 years old. Who do I report to? <gasps> Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh man, it's Pidgeotto. Wild lap, I'm sorry, it's, it's wild lap jump out. Go away! Yeah, go away! Alright, we'll buy some drugs. I want five drugs. I am. <laughs> Wait, what? I am a monster. Oh, coach. <laughs> That's it, you're mine. There we go, success, Nooksy was caught. Whoa, whoa, man, is this... <laughs> Am I playing a cursed creepypasta now? Tell its position by taste of liquid from foot? What? Wh no? So yeah, that exists in the world. I really need a break. I'm gonna play an N64 Pokemon Classic. Pokemon Stadium. No, not that Pokemon Stadium, you silly geese. Pokemon Stadium on the Super Nintendo, the game that never existed. And if this is what it would have been, then I wish it stayed like that. You got your classic choices of Pokemon here. Spia, Lizad, Dogass, and k k k That's so boring. What did Blastoise do to deserve that, huh? What in the holy mother of butts is going on here? It honestly took me a solid 10 minutes to try and figure out how this game even works. So before this battle starts, you'll see this meter down here. You fill this up by literally rolling your thumb over the D-pad as fast as possible. I'm serious. If you build up the meter fast enough and then press the A button first, you'll get to choose an attack. Okay, first off, I kind of like that. Every time I played a Pokemon game as a kid and my opponent went first, I'd be like, that is some bull but now, there's at least a mechanic that's solely up to you whether or not you go first. The Pokemon don't have any stats though, so just pick whatever move sounds best. Alright, games, whoop Spia's butt! <laughs> what is that? I swear Josh ran like that in an episode of Drake and Josh one time. Alright, let's just pick Mewtwo and win the game. Or I mean, Moo? Mew? I guess that's technically close enough. I just used Mew's best move every time. Hypnosigenesis. Wow, I don't feel like a winner at all. That doesn't seem right. The Legend of Pokemon is a fun little bootleg game, and yes, let me just say this, technically it's a ROM hack, but I have these games on physical cartridges as well, making them a bootleg in my book. Anyway, yep, that's our boy Pikachu. E perigoso ir sozino leviosto. Alright, now I'm really confused, is this Spanish or a Harry Potter spell? Yeah man, if you like Zelda, then this game is... That. None of the enemies have alternate sprites though, which is kind of a letdown. I mean seriously, you couldn't replace the Octorok with a Tentacruel or something? So for all of you Pokemon Zelda crossover fans who speak Portuguese and can cast Harry Potter spells, this is absolutely the game for you! Pokemon 2000, a game meant for nobody with at least two working brain cells! Well, 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 who's this big beefy boy walking around like that? Charmeleon looks like me when I'm desperately holding in a dump trying to walk casually, yet with a purpose to find a toilet. The game is a pretty alright side-scroller. It's clearly a reskinned bootleg of some other official NES game that I definitely don't know, but it works! I've played so many NES side-scrollers, they all start to blend together. So, good game. I guess I have nothing else to say. No, what if I simply refuse, huh? Now you have no power over me! Pokemon Silver. Silver! You know, just like the one from our childhood! Mm-hmm, yep, it's all coming back to me. Like a boomerang. 
covered in saw blades. So despite having a bootleg Sandshrew on the title screen, it looks like we actually take control of a bootleg Rhydon. Rhydon these nuts. <laughs> It's another side-scroller, but one that I actually despise! Mainly because this is a game where you can't kill the enemies. Yeah, you just stun them with your... candy? Yeah, I could do this all day, buddy. I'm a YouTuber. I've got no life and no plans. Oh, but the enemies, of course they can kill you! What kind of exchange is that? I don't know what game Pokemon Silver is based off of exactly, but more importantly, I don't care. This game is stupid. Hold on, something doesn't seem right. You know what, I can't be too mad at this. Super Mario Bros 2, but with Pokemon. We got fan favorites like Pikachu, Oddish, uh, I honestly couldn't tell you who that is to save my life, and Chansey respectively. The game is just Super Mario Bros 2, but with a cleaner and newer coat of paint with- OH MY GOD Oddish, WHAT ARE YOU DOING?! Have you no remorse for your own family? <laughs> it's a cute little game, even having the enemies replaced with other Pokemon. My personal favorite being Jesse and James during the boss battles. That's cute, I like that! Things can only go up from here! Po- Pokemon. Never heard of her. So we get to choose between- Ooh, Chokorita and Waninoko, which is actually the Japanese name for Totodile, so okay, fine, I won't make fun of it. I will make fun of everything else, though. Who, what, and why? The game is your typical Super Nintendo side-scroller, but I'll admit one that's not too bad. It actually might be the best bootleg we've played today. You can jump, shoot a projectile, attack, and switch characters with the select button? Now hold on just a minute! If you're gonna let me play as both characters, why even make me choose from the start? It's like the waiter asking if you want soup or salad, and when you say soup, they just bring both! I mean, the game is okay, I guess. The platforming is super inconsistent considering, you know, the game is a bootleg. But all in all, if I received this game as a child, I'd probably still hate it too. Then what else is there to check out? Ah, uh, of course. Anime. Pokemon really was this unstoppable force in the 90s. It not only had super successful video games, but equally as successful and popular trading cards and anime. Anything Pokemon touched turned to gold. Or silver, depending on what you like. So if you can't capitalize on a video game, why not a TV show? There have been loads of Pokemon-inspired media that I don't really want to lump into this particular video. Such as Yu-Gi-Oh! Following the success of Pokemon came Yu-Gi-Oh! This was pretty much just as big as Pokemon back in the day. All of my friends got the cards and wanted to duel. Heck, I wasn't even that interested in the franchise, but still got the cards because that's what everyone else was doing. The show was really good too. It had this mature feel to it. I don't know how to explain it. Everyone was watching Yu-Gi-Oh! but I don't consider it a bootleg Pokemon. It did its own thing really successfully, and that's to be commended for sure. Especially for a series made so shortly after Pokemon. Same with Digimon, Bakugan, and Yokai Watch. These series have all created an identity of their own, and sure, while sharing similar Pokemon features that made the series successful, I wouldn't go as far as to call them bootlegs or shameful ripoffs. Because don't worry, there's plenty more of those to talk about. Such as... Monsuno! So, you can predict how I'm gonna fight? Well, let me be unpredictable. This was Nickelodeon's attempt at cashing in on the Pokemon craze. In 2012. Yeah, maybe a little too late on that. The problem with this show is that it's just really generic. There's nothing new here that hasn't been done a million times in any other monster collecting anime. Stingipede! Sizzler! Launch! Pidgeotto, I choose you! The protagonist is just every anime guy ever. He doesn't even get colorful hair to make him stand out. Literally, he might as well be a background character. For every dark, a light. For every foe, a friend. For every- The episodes focus too much on the battles and trying to be epic. It's always, you don't want to mess with my monster, we've been training hard. And the bad guy says, <laughs> training hard, you say? You're weak and pathetic. 
Like, no joke, that is 90% of the show. No childlike wonder or charm, no sense of adventure or building characters that we care about. Just focus on the cool monsters and epic fights. The show was created by Jeremy Padawar, who's famous for creating... You guessed it, Monsuno. Yeah, this is the only show he's ever made. However, he's a massive head honcho in the toy business, being the former executive vice president with marketing at Jack Specific. He's worked with the biggest franchises, launching toys and merchandise with shows like Spongebob, Phineas and Ferb, WWE, and Dragon Ball, just to name a few. He's clearly a genius with toys, so Monsuno was clearly made to act as a big commercial for the kids to buy the toys. But in order for the kids to want the toys, the show needs to be good. And not... this. It's a shame the show didn't work out. Nickelodeon struck gold with Avatar The Last Airbender, and if they were to strike gold twice with another anime, who knows what the network would look like today. The opening theme song also sucks. Feel the power, man of the hour. Like, that's the one thing you need to get right if you want to grab the kids' attention. How do I explain this? It needs to be less Monsuno... And more Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, you feel me? Twenty twelve was also just a little too late to be a Pokemon ripoff. They did have a video game though. And it was somehow worse than the show. Congratulations, Monsuno. You failed in three different ways. Bad show, bad toys, bad video game. Three strikes, and you're out. But now let's talk about something fun. A show I've been kind of teasing since the beginning of this video. And that's... <laughs> Fighting Foodons. A Japanese manga turned anime about anthropomorphic foods that do martial arts and fight amongst each other for food supremacy. I... love that. Fighting Foodons, otherwise known as Martial Arts Cooking Legend Bistro Recipe, was a manga series appearing in Comic Bonbon, bon, which was a manga series for kids. It made its debut in 1998, so pretty much peak Pokemon time. So in this world, there are these magic meal tickets that, when stuck into food, bring them to life. Where the big baddies plan on using that power to take over the world. And it's up to your child protagonist to stop them. Simple, yet effective. Dude, now this is how you design your main character! They're so chaotically 90s, it's perfect. Hey! <coughs> Stop eating and start battling, kid! They're the gluttons! Mm. I think I'll have another order of red beans and rice. And since it's the 90s, our main characters' names are Chase and Kayla. You know, whatever white people's names work best. They really make a good duo. Child protagonists in these kind of shows just work better. Now, while Pokemon has Pikachu as their mascot, Fighting Foodons has Fried Ricer. Oh, right. Fried Ricer's ready. Fried Ricer. He's basically Chase's main Foodon, and he's pretty kick-ass. I'm not gonna lie. This whole show just kind of does everything kind of right. It was dubbed by four kids, which I know in hindsight makes you roll your eyes. But hey, it's a company called Four Kids making a show that's for kids. So yeah, the music, the voice actors, they all do a great job in portraying the silly and chaotic nature of the show. I'm gonna add some vinegar! It sure seems to be doing wonders for old Noodleator! Ah! Why, Dan, this is no time to be worrying about cooking! And I think that's Fighting Foodon's biggest strength. So many Pokemon knockoffs try to be serious or focus on being cool to the kids, and in turn just makes the franchises feel really generic and uninteresting. Fighting Foodon seems to know that its concept is ridiculous and just runs with it. When it comes to fighting gluttons, we rebel chefs have to stick together like peanut butter and jelly. Fried Ricer speaks like a Pokemon, only being able to say the words fried and Ricer. Ah, Ricer! Fried Ricer! Despite apparently just being a human with a fried rice bowl head. I don't know. But then there's Sir Dumpling, who only speaks in British catchphrases. Right, here we go. Bip, bip, 
Why? I don't associate dumplings with Britain. It's literally just a stupid four kids choice. Jolly good! Bip, bip. Here we go! It isn't the greatest show in the world. I mean, I don't think anyone was expecting that. There's only 26 episodes, so there's not a ton you'd have to dedicate your life to if you want to watch the show. But even then, sometimes 26 episodes feels like a lot. It's cute when the foods get introduced and have a little battle, but the plots themselves are never anything too engaging. It's literally a show about kids playing with food. Oh, you want to be talented cooking? I'll show you cooking! Stop my mother's recipe for fried rice, will ya? I'll show you! But I love the strong Saturday morning cartoon vibe to it. I don't know why I have such a soft spot for the show. I guess the ridiculous concept and execution of it all really warms my heart. The fact that it's trying something so outlandish. And hey, it's got a cat girl. Furries all around the world love fighting foodons. There was a video game on Game Boy that looked pretty much like Pokemon. Well, at least they're not trying to hide it there. Fighting foodons wasn't a great show, but it definitely was a show. Alright, here's Legends with a Z. If I'm being honest, I have no idea what the hell is going on with this show. We follow two kids who live in Brooklyn. You can tell because there's these 50s looking mobsters hanging around. There's, uh, these monsters called legends that people can find, and they fight sometimes. And there's an evil who wants to rule the world with them, and kids gotta stop them. Again, it's not unique in any single way, and the monsters are honestly pretty forgettable. The only thing I kinda like with this show is that it's incredibly ugly. And I'm not even saying that as an insult or trying to be funny. I genuinely like how not clean the animation looks, and the over-the-top facial reactions the kids make. Everyone just looks ugly, but in a charming kinda way. I mean, it's the only thing that makes Legend stand out from any other anime. They also made the only white kid, Mike McField, the fat one, which is kind of funny. For a show about monster collecting, there's surprisingly not a lot of monsters that show up in Legends. They do make appearances fairly sporadic and do a little battling because, you know, why else are we here? The main portions of the episode, though, mainly follow the kids needing to play Scooby-Doo and use their detective skills to figure out what the big bad adults are up to with their evil plans since the villains in this show are Home Alone levels of incompetent. The monsters are also super intelligent and can just talk to everyone normally. And since the anime was only ever released in Japan, the cute monsters have the coolest voices ever. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to crap on it too much. It's good background noise, I guess. But there's not much more than that. There were three Legends games that came out during its lifespan, which honestly blows my mind. Two of them were the worst RPGs you'll ever play on the Game Boy Advance, looking like wannabe Mega Man Battle Networks. And the other one was released on the PS2, being some kind of fighting game. It's not the worst game ever, but definitely nothing that kept my attention for longer than five minutes. And in terms of anime that blatantly ripped off Pokemon, I think that's where we'll end that. There's plenty of other shows out there like Monster Rancher and Zoids, but at that point we'd be here all day. And there's only so much I could say about a lot of these shows. Like, there's one called Dragon Drive, about a high school kid who battles with dragons and befriends them. It might as well be a sequel to Legends. But they do use cards in that show to summon in battle, so I guess it's more of a Yu-Gi-Oh ripoff than anything. But now we're getting off track. So let's move on to a different and more modern way of gaming. Mobile games. Now, bootleg mobile games are pretty tricky to talk about, mainly because there's always been an endless amount of them constantly being pumped out. The problem isn't finding these games in general, but more so finding any remnants of them even existing. With Nintendo using their team of lethal ninja lawyers to strike these games down and have them wiped from history entirely. I remember there being tons of bootleg Pokemon Go ripoffs trying to capitalize on its popularity in 2016. They all had some kind of variation on the name Monster Go or Go Pocket, you know, something just legally different enough. 
It was always interesting to see what original nightmare concoctions these people would come up with. I can't imagine these games being anything you'd care about, but if you really needed more Pokemon Go throwing the ball physics, then here, you probably would have loved Monster Ball. A mobile game that really started to get some momentum for a while was Monster Explore, or Mon Squad. I think the game went through 50 different renames to try and hide it from Nintendo. There's surprisingly a lot of effort with this game. A lot of stolen effort, but effort nonetheless. This honestly feels like a Pokemon game that should exist on mobile, you know? You take control of Ash and need to create a party of Pokemon, where you then simply get into battles. This type of multi-party battle system where you choose from different attacks with a cooldown between them is literally what Raid Shadow Legends is, and this isn't even a sponsor, just an observation. I played another mobile game called Tales of Crestoria that was literally the same thing as this, and as a Tales fan, I really liked it. The game was super simple and shallow on the surface, but being able to unlock characters throughout the series that I loved and wanted in my party, to the point where I put some real-life money into the game to try and get the rare character I wanted, was very mobile game friendly. So the fact that Game Freak hasn't done this yet honestly blows my mind. And again, while all the assets are stolen, there's surprisingly some effort sprinkled in with the Pokemon's animations, cinematic camera angles, and background scenery. I'm not trying to advocate for the game or praise it, but it's honestly no more worse than Pokemon Unite, an official game, both having a very strong pay-to-win system. But if you truly believe that this game sucks, then may I introduce you to Monster Trainer. A 3D polygonal crap fest. We play as a trainer and need to catch this. We do this by simply aiming the ball at the monster. We did it, wasn't that fun? The game then auto-teleports you to another monster where they then battle. And no, you don't get any say in what attacks they do or can even change the camera angle to see what's going on. And then I got an ad. But hey, it was actually kinda relevant because it was another Pokemon bootleg mobile game. Monster Box, where your monsters are T-posing and you need to capture them in the jar. Okay. So that's literally the entire game here. Aim your Pokeball to catch a monster and then watch them auto-battle. You can't level them up or do anything to affect the outcome. How pointless. This game is terrible, but I did get another Pokemon ripoff ad, and this one looked absolutely insane. There's an Auto Runner section, a Mario Party board, Squirtle and Blastoise cosplaying as Ninja Turtles. Straight up, that's just Pikachu, you didn't even try to hide that one. And apparently you can select Mewtwo as your starter. What a game. I can't wait for it to be taken off the App Store immediately and have the creators mysteriously disappear. Up next is Pokemon Girl Dress Up. Oh boy. So we start off by choosing our favorite girl. We got a Rattata Eevee mix, a Magikarp girl, an Ampharos girl... I... I don't know, man. Let's just pick the Magikarp. So, as the name implies, this game has you... dressing up your Pokemon girl. You have limited options, and if you want more outfits, you probably have to spend money, which... <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that. Alright, so I did it. She looks beautiful. You can then... pet her with your sparkles and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can share your creation to Facebook and Instagram. I'm sure my mom would love to see what I'm doing with my life. Okay, heading back to Pokemon Go bootlegs, we have Pixelmon Go. So I enter my name as Waffle, and I'm told it's too short? What? Okay, fine, how about Waffles... And whoa, okay, that's my actual street I live on, let's just blur that out. So yeah. It's Pokemon Go, but with bootleg Lego looking ass, Roblox looking ass creatures. Like this little fella. Yeah, please excuse my Google search. The problem though comes when you realize the ball has no physics. Literally, I'm trying to throw it and catch this Pixelmon, but it's not working. I tried everything and I'm convinced that this game doesn't work. Like, they literally didn't program the ball or catching anything. You're just supposed to look at it. 
Yeah, a lot of mobile games are just going to be this. A lot of lazy nothing that you only check out because of your sick curiosity. There's tons of other attempts that aren't even worth mentioning, even if they do have pixel art and an adventure with an overworld and battle sequences, it's just gonna be diet Pokemon at the end of the day. And Nintendo is definitely cracking down on this stuff, because those were the only Pokemon bootlegs I could find and download from the App Store directly. Heck, by the time this video comes out, they'll probably be long gone, with a crop of new terrible games. So for now, that's where we'll give my phone a break with mobile games. And let's move on to something else. Toys! Yeah, bootleg and knockoff toys are as common as bootleg and knockoff mobile games. Heck, I was in Seattle a few months ago and came across this Pokemon Gotcha machine. Running into bootlegs in the wild is so satisfying. Plushies are always the worst, though. You really just want something cute and cuddly to hold while you go to sleep. And this is what you get? The last thing I want to do when I see this is close my eyes. And the horrors don't end there. Alright, Pokemon Go Plus. You can really tell this came out in 2016 with Her Herners and Yultus. This is my favorite. Alright, it seems like a good deal. You get Nightmare Pikachu, you get Cheeto Dust Meowth, and uh... Well, I don't even know what this is. This looks like a grill. <laughs> it, it, it comes with a pig, too, so I don't know if this is... If, if you're ever hungry for some Meowth or Pikachu. You know, free grill. Go nuts. Oh, okay, nice. We get a dog toy. Why not? Why, you know, why can't dogs have fun with us? It's only $4.97 for... Oh, yeah, for... For that. Gengar looks a little too happy to be here. It actually kind of looks like a mix between Gengar and Jinx. Is this a Pokemon too? I, the face right here kind of looks like Oddish, but I, I don't think so. We just got to focus on Gengar Chew Toy. It doesn't even have a name. Oh yeah, now come on now. What what bath time isn't complete without Rubber Ducky Pikachu? Oh uh, man, you can tell so hard where they like painted on bootleg ears and little red spots just to make it look like Pikachu. I feel like I've seen this. You know what I'm saying? I think I've gone to flea markets and seen buckets of rubber duckies, and this Pikachu one was in there. Oh, Jesus! Alright, hey, jump scare warning. You got Misty looking... Definitely looking. Ugh, this is, this is actually one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Why does she have some tomato sauce? Genuinely, who would buy this? Like, even... Uh, you see Pokemon right here. I understand parents might be silly enough to do that. But when you see this... Oh, now we're in business. Poke- <laughs> po Pokemon go. Pokemon go to Walmart and please buy me this. In concept, you know, I, I kind of like it. It's like a weird bionicle thing. Ash or whoever this is right here, though. They've seen better days. I, ju I just can't get over this. Pokemon. And why is there a dash right here? I don't know what noise that would make. 373 pieces! I'm not doing all that for bootleg Schmarzard and Schmash toys over here. Alright, now this is this is a Beyblade. This is just this is just wrong. This is just a wrong manufacturing error right here with Pikachu and uh Bluey. Once again, Pokemon Go, you can tell 2016 was at large. Oh, what a collection of fellas. We got Tyranitar and Tepig who looks like he peed on the carpet and you said no. Lugia, uh, <laughs> Pikachu, and Pikachu. Why do we get two Pikachus? And why does one look okay and one looks like he got hit with the ugly stick? Oh my god, I didn't even, I didn't even notice this little fella right here. Again, I don't know the whole Pokedex. You know, there's a lot of Pokemon. There's probably some that I don't know. I don't think this fella, it makes the cut. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at that. Pokemon 3 is so good, you didn't even need Pokemon 2. We'll jump straight to Pokemon 3. With everyone's favorite. Uh... You... 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 And you. More fun waiting for you. Only 99 cents. Okay, well, for 99 cents, I wouldn't mind checking out Pokemon 3. This looks the most legit so far. This looks like something that Nintendo would release. Fun game, pred, pred, predigy, predigy, pat. 
Is that even a word? I gotta Google it. Let me let me look on my phone really quick. All right, no, it's it's not a word. Oh my god, there's a lot to unpack here. Pocket Monica, jump, jump um chess. It's a little typo there, but that's okay. We all make mistakes. Kick others back in this race ahead game. Dot dot dot. But don't get caught, or you've been kick out. And it's everyone's favorite Pokemon, Monica. Be the first player to move all four of your page around the game board. What? Oh, it's a board game. So it sounds like it's a race game, but it's also jump, jump em chess. Uh, whatever, as long as Monica's happy. Oh, now these, these are classic. These are a staple in any kind of local grocery store or, you know, Mexican or Chinese restaurant. Like, these are a staple. These are actually pretty sick. I like it. I actually like Pikachu, how he looks right here, very minimal. I like the color scheme on Vulpix and Jigglypuff. These actually kick ass and are way cooler than the official Pokemon stickers. I actually want this. All I have to do is, you know, go to a local Chinese restaurant in Oregon or something. Oof, that's, that's rough, buddy. I don't think if a kid saw this, they would want to ride it. I think they would want to run in fear. I hope I was able to properly show off the vast and wide, wide world of Pokemon bootlegs. Let me know your favorite or least favorite. And if there's a series of bootlegs you want me to check out, then leave it in the comments down below, and I'll sure to give it a look. See you next time, you good looking people. But before we go, who's that Pokemon? It's me.